if you keep defying the odds, is it us or is it the odds? When I first came to the club, I had no intention of being a manager, none. When you've been in the game as long as I have, you just love the game and that, and that winning feeling again. So uh, I thought, you know what, I, I think I can do this. You know, his persona that he, that he had when he was a player, that, he, that he's fiery and he's still got that fire in his belly. And when the, when the match starts, uh, the 90 minutes begins, you, you see that side of Lee. But, I mean, away from, away from the pitch, in the office and around the place, he's, he's one of the most laid-back people you'll ever meet. What he's instilled in the team is a, a mentality that you work hard um, and a will to win and you never give up. He's great with me, open to suggestions, and, you know, he's, he's very much, um, you know, talks about the team effort and, and stuff like that. It's not a, not a dictatorship. From day one, he's been spot on with us. Um, we've had loads of success under him as everyone has seen. One thing that I did say to myself when I took over is that I'm going to be honest and, and straight with them all because that's all I ever wanted as a player. There's times that I, I say things, they ask me a question, I tell them the answer. They don't like the answer, but they respect me more because it's like, do you know what? Like, I know where I stand with you. He's brave in his selection, he's, he's brave in his shape, he's brave in the, in the ethos that he's instilled along with Jacko and, and the other backroom staff. The most important thing is the team. If there's a people that want to play as individuals and worried about their own career, they're at the wrong place because they will not play under me. They have to work hard as a group and work hard for your mate to sit in next year. And then if you do that with the ability that you have, then, then we'll go on and, and win things. Literally every player that's come in, I think, has been a success over the past 18 months. Uh, and that shows the recruitment side of things has been spot on. Well, Lee would say ducking and diving. That's what Lee, Lee would call it. Uh, I think when, when you're aware that you haven't got that much money, you recognise that you have to go for a certain type of player. Uh, so we're at the back of the queue in some ways, but then relationships are massively important. OK, we're a good club and, and we make the younger players better, but you've still got to persuade them in the beginning. So Steve, what he does is persuades them and just stays around and just make sure that, look, we're still here. Like We want your player and, and we'll look after your player. And, and that's priceless. Lee's involved in that a lot, really, right at the forefront, and he's been great. So me and him would sit down and speak to players and trying to convince them to come here. Steve is, is it's amazing what he does. Um, again, I don't think people realise the, the amount of hours that he spends on the phone to people and just keeping in touch with them, keeping everybody happy. He works tirelessly, um, not just during those windows, but throughout the season, you know, um, looking at players, highlighting players that can that can help us. So we're talking about maybe all the way through May, so before we even finish the season, all the way through May, June, July, you're just phone calls, organisation, watching players, trying to get certain ones in. To go to clubs like Arsenal, Chelsea, West Ham, like the, the, the clubs we went to last year, and, and to get the loans that we did, it's hard work. All credit to him because, you know, some of the recruitment's been first class and uh, obviously we wouldn't have been able to have the success that we've had without it. I think if you're a player at the likes of Chelsea's, West Ham's, knowing you're going to come here, you're going to learn under Bose, you're going to get game time, it's a dream loan move. I think we knew Conor Gallagher, for example, at Chelsea. We knew he was a good player, but we also knew he'd never played a league game. He was uh, only 19 years of age and uh, bringing him in, he's going to go straight into a championship team with a, a, a team at that stage where we were fancied maybe for relegation at that stage. So there was a lot of reasons why we, you know, we thought it might not work. But I think the belief was there, certainly for me and from the manager, the belief was there that this is going to work for us. And uh, for him, for example, it's, it's, it's worked out really, really well so far. 
So Lyle Taylor was our first signing. So I suppose Lee Bowyer's first signing. For me, the most important person was the striker. You have to get the right person in who's going to score you goals. Because if you don't score goals, you don't win games. It's that simple. And Lowell Taylor was the best striker in the league that I recognised from the season before. We sat down, we had a conversation, me, him and Steve Gallen, and that was how it came about. But it was the football side that I, I said to, I sold to him. Like, look, come here, trust me, you're going to score 20 plus goals. we get promotion and, and, and just believe in what I'm telling you. I'm going to make you a better player. And um, thankfully he came and, and he just couldn't sc stop scoring. Without the pair of them, I wouldn't be here. So um, to say they are, were integral would be uh, an understatement, I suppose. I think if you ask him now, I think he made the right decision. <laughs> the highs and the lows before we even got to Wembley was, was unbelievable. I mean, to say we did it the hard way, we went and we battered Donny for 60 minutes or something. And we're only, what were we, 2-1 up from the first leg. Uh, to concede that last minute goal, it was, that was painful. To then come home and know that we had such a good record at home and basically start on fire, another high, and then five minutes later or whatever it was to, to concede, you're just like, Jesus Christ, we're not doing this easy, lads. And then it was just a topsy-turvy game. And I think, obviously, Butler scored in injury time um, to take to extra time. Then Marquis scored. And then we're thinking, oh, no, here we go. We should be a bit too confident. Taylor. Oh, what a goal! And an equalising goal on aggregates! What a response! What a time! We just all froze, and then it took us a good couple of seconds to realise he's actually done it. And we're thinking, oh no, we're going to have to go penalties. Obviously, Lyle being Lyle, being nice and cool, calm, collected. It wasn't what the feeling was on the, in the stands. I can tell you that. I didn't feel any nerves until after the ball had gone in the back of the net and I turned round to jog back to the halfway line. And that was when the nerves hit me, my legs went jelly. I think it kind of dawns on you that this is a big, big moment. This is a penalty shootout to make it to Wembley and, and it's a big, big moment. And I've just done something so unorthodox in the grand scheme of things. He's missed a step yet, Marquis. And then Naby stepped up, missed. Well, Tommy Rowe has to score this. Well, the outcome is the same for Doncaster. It all ends here. Rowe's penalty. Well, we, we, ran, we ran, obviously, to go and celebrate uh, because uh, the, the kid had missed the, the decisive penalty. <laughs> Seeing that, you know, with Dills coming out of his songs and, you know, and all in a huddle, it, it, it means so much to the fans to know that the players care as well. Me and Lee, there wasn't any time for high-fiving each other. It was just, let's get on with it and try and win this thing. But I never knew it. I knew it was never going to be easy in the final. On the one hand, you know, you're trying to treat it like any other game to keep the lads sort of very much sort of low key and, uh, and keep their preparation the same. But at the same time, it's almost impossible to ignore, you know, the magnitude of, of the game. For me to be walking the, the, the side out in, in the final, it was a massive one. Like I started here as a kid, um, just training over the back there. Uh, and then to be walking out the team on, at Wembley is some achievement. I, and I'll never forget it. Waiting is almost over. Away we go in the League One playoff final. But I just remember like the first few minutes, and then obviously we give the goal away. It's problematic. It's a huge problem. I wasn't even looking at the incident. I was looking further up the pitch, thinking where was Nebby going to pass the ball to, looking at the forwards' movement to to give him an option. 
and then I turn back round and I just see Dylan chasing the ball into the goal and I'm thinking, what just happened there? Like, how's that happen? That's, that's not even part of the game. When does that happen? It never happens, so. And it goes under Dill's foot and you just stood there thinking, surely not like this, surely not like this. There was a good three seconds of just silence and then everyone, there was just a roar. Everyone just knew, like, we've got to get behind these guys now. We've done it all season, don't let them down now. It's strange, I feel like we are better going into the games as underdogs. We seem to thrive on that, certainly the group. But I think just the way Lee has got the mentality of, of the players, he's got the group in a superb place. Arebo again, Lyle Taylor pulling wide again. Is this the chance? It is the chance! And it's the goal that they craved! Perrington arriving! Josh Cullen, he stuck the cross out, the queue go, and Paul Tucci put it in, but forced in! Patrick Bauer! These Charlton players, right the legend! Literally not giving them time to go down the other end and equalise is just that you couldn't have asked for, for a better finish. So the culmination of your season is the last six seconds to achieve the goal you set out to achieve before the season, the first ball had been kicked. It's making me tired thinking about it, to be honest. This is unbelievable. We just, you knew you was part of something special, the way it panned out. I mean, you couldn't have asked for more drama and, and, and for the day to have gone any better, really. It was relief. Um, it was relief that it was done. We'd done it. It seemed like it was against the odds, um, like when we, when it all sort of died down and we, we was in the changing room at Wembley, we sort of sat down, we had a beer, and we was just like, oh my God, like we actually pulled it off. It was that sort of feeling like, we believed we could, we, you know, and I don't think many did. This thing that we put together is unique, and I've said that from the beginning, and we're going to go on a journey. I said top two, sorry, we finished third. But do you know the most important thing? All my staff, all my staff, everybody. Everybody's played a part, and this club now is in a the best place it's been in a long time. And that stands for all of us. All of us. Them fans, they love you. You're the heroes now. You don't realise what you've just done. You deserve all the praise that you're going to get. Every single one of us. And can someone just tell me uh, where we're going? I think that it was just such a great occasion for the fans, what they'd been through for the past six, seven years, just to have that day at Wembley sold out 90,000 and for them to be able to they'll remember that for the rest of their lives it meant so much because the club means something to me you know to be that end where our supporters was and the party after that we had it was just it was just like one of the most memorable days you, know, you, you could think of it's one of the proudest moments that, that i felt in the game and, and i've had a lot of proud moments but obviously Lee being ex-Charlton sort of understands he lives in he lives in the area, you know, just uh, outside of London in, in Kent. And he really has, he's brought everything together. He's brought that feel good factor back where we never really had that for many years. He's just brought back a team that work hard and a, a team that fans are really, really proud of. How far can we go? Who knows? But on any given day, I think we're, we're more than capable of uh, matching any team in the division and, and upsetting the odds. I mean, if you keep defying the odds, is it us or is it the odds? Um, we keep performing at a level that people say we're not capable of performing. So how far we can go, I honestly don't know. But what I do know is that every time that the players step onto the pitch, they're going to give 100%. And with our fans behind us, especially at home, then we've got a good chance in every game. No matter who we play, and we showed that against Leeds, and we showed that against Fulham away. The most important thing is, is that we stay in the league. That's our first and foremost goal. Once we get to them points, then we, we look and say, OK, maybe we can take a few more gambles here and there to try and get the wins to maybe get us a bit higher up the league.